Hi, I'm Dominic Goldston, Senior Service Engineer for Timken. Today, we're going to talk about our quick fit installation for our split cylindrical roller bearing. Always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. Be safe while you're on the job. And always follow your employer's standard safety practices. Split house units are becoming more and more common because of their many benefits. A big benefit is that every component is split to the shaft. That means you can install the housed unit without removing the adjacent equipment. That greatly reduces the downtime when changing a housed unit in a trapped location. Housed units are available as flanged units, hangers, take-ups, and the one we're working with today, a pillow block unit. They come in two main designs, horizontal split and what we call the quick fit. The advantage of the quick fit design is that you can slide the angled pedestal base under the shaft without lifting it. This can save a lot of time in applications where a tight space could mean removing the drive. These assemblies come in two versions. There is the float or expansion version, and there's also the fixed or retained version of this assembly. Today we'll be installing a retained version. But before we start, we will go through the names of the components. From the inside out, we have the inner race halves, clamping rings, cage and roller assemblies, outer race halves, seals, the housing, and finally, the pedestal. Let's get started. Clean the shaft and verify it's the right size and form. This step is crucial for proper installation and optimum bearing performance. If the shaft isn't within tolerance, you'll have an improper fit on the inner race. That could cause bearing and shaft damage. Unpack and clean the pedestal halves on a clean work surface. Slide the bottom half into position under the shaft and loosely install the mounting bolt. Carefully unpack and clean the bearing assembly. You don't need to remove the preservative. It's compatible with lubricants. Remove the cage halves from the inner race assembly by lightly prying on the cage clips. Be careful to avoid damaging the components. Make sure that both cage clips are retained on half of the cage. Remove the clamping rings from the inner race assembly. Lightly oil the bore of the inner race halves and place them as close as possible to the correct axial position with the joints at 12 and 6 o'clock. Ensure the match marks line up. There should be an equal gap at each joint. This is an important step. If there are no gaps, stop the installation and contact your local Timken sales or service engineer. If gaps are right, fit the inner race clamping rings. Make sure to follow the match marks. The thrust faces should face inward and slide smoothly into the inner race grooves. Ensure that the clamping ring joints are located 90 degrees away from the inner race joint. Insert the clamping ring fasteners and thread them in until finger tight. While tightening the fasteners, Ensure the gaps at the inner race joints are equal. You can use filler gauges to check these gaps. The gaps between the clamping ring joints should also be equal. Unpack the housing, add a match mark to assist with alignment, and thoroughly clean the housing halves. Lightly oil the outer race seating groove and the OD of the outer race halves. The axial ribs on the outer race halves of a retained assembly allow it to carry an axial load. Expansion or float assemblies have non-ribbed outer races that allow for thermal expansion of the shaft. Place the outer races into the housing halves, making sure the match marks will line up once assembled. Place the outer race half with the lubrication hole in the top half of the housing. The outer race joints should extend the same height above the housing joint faces. Pre-assemble the housing halves, loosely tightening the holdback screws if they are present. Fully tighten the housing joint fasteners ensuring the joints are closed. Insert the axial pusher pins and screws and tighten them evenly. These pins will fix the outer race squarely against the shoulder of the seating groove. Then fully tighten the radial holdback screws if they are present. Now that you have the outer races properly fixed in the housing halves, separate the housing and install the seals if needed. These are Kevlar packing seals, but other types are available. 
Carefully slide in the bottom housing half by rotating it into the space between the pedestal and inner race. Confirm the final position by rotating half of the cage and roller assembly between the inner and outer races. The cage should pass freely between the races without jamming or getting trapped. Remove the cage half and bottom housing half. Tighten the clamp ring fasteners evenly. Work your way towards the proper torque setting while ensuring the clamping ring joints have equal gaps. The torque values for all fasteners can be found in the product catalog. If you lose a fastener, you have to replace it with a metric class 12.9 equivalent. Tap on the clamping rings with a soft face mallet and retighten the fasteners at the proper torque. Repeat this step a few times to verify the clamping rings are properly seated in the inner race grooves. At this point, you'd normally add grease. We're installing this assembly without grease so we can focus on key details, but I'll still point out what to grease and when to grease it. Grease the inner race and cage halves. Install the cage halves on the inner race. Make sure the match marks line up and the roll pins are fully engaged in the cage clips. Make sure the cage can rotate freely. Fully pack the cage and roller assembly with grease. We're looking for 100% grease fill in the bearing. Pack the housing halves with the correct amount of grease. How much grease goes in the housing depends on the shaft speed. You can find the correct housing fill in the product catalog. Lightly oil the spherical OD of the housing halves and the spherical ID of the pedestal halves. Slide the bottom housing half into position. Rotate the shaft by hand. The cage and rollers should rotate freely. Carefully install the upper half of the housing over the bearing assembly. Check your match marks. Install the housing fasteners and tighten to the appropriate torque. There should be no gap at the housing joints. Check the pedestal cap match marks. Install the cap in the proper orientation, engaging the dowel pins. There should be no gap at the pedestal joints. If there is a gap, gently tap the pedestal cap down with a soft-faced mallet. Install the pedestal cap bolts just tight enough to hold the support joints closed. At this point, only if it is safe to do so, rotate the shaft at low speed. If possible, apply a low load as well. This allows the spherical surfaces of the housing and pedestal to correctly self-align. If this isn't possible or safe, rotate the shaft by hand. Fully tighten the pedestal cap bolts to the appropriate torque. Finally, tighten the mounting bolts to the appropriate torque. We just installed this housed unit without removing any adjacent equipment, and that is the big advantage of using a quick fit housed unit. If you have any questions, please contact your Timken service or sales engineer or your authorized Timken distributor.